In this video, I'm gonna talk about three really awesome DAX tricks. The second trick is the trick that I have learned new. It's gonna blow your socks off. And the third trick is also pretty damn awesome. All right, the first trick has to do with limiting the visual up until a certain date, especially a table or a matrix visual. Take a look. So here in Power BI, I am working with this particular uh, table right here. Two simple columns from the calendar table, year and the month, and we have total sales presented right here. At the moment, if I happen to select anything in the slicer, the slicer year and the month is also coming from the calendar table. If I happen to select anything in the slicer, let's say May, it is going to show me the data of the May. However, my need is to limit this particular table from the start up until May and the data should be limited up until May. The last month here should be the month of May. And if I happen to change that June, it should then expand up until June. That's the kind of behavior that I'm looking at. How do we do it? Let's take a look. All right, to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a disconnected table. That's one way of doing it. And I am going to go in the home tab and that's where I have a new table and I'll just reference my calendar table right here. So let's just call this as my calendar disconnected and I'm going to just reference the calendar table. So this table is nothing but the reference of this particular table. All the columns which are there in the calendar table are now also there in this table. The only reason of creating a disconnected table is that once you pick up any particular filter or a slicer from this table, since it's disconnected, it will not be able to propagate any filters to the sales table and therefore we'll have a disconnected slicer. Take a look. So I'll just quickly go over to the disconnected table. So I'll just maybe click right here, go to the calendar disconnected. The one thing that I need to do is I need to sort the month in the index order. So click on the month, sort it by the index, which is right here. And the months are going to display in the proper order. Now I'm going to go back to the visual and change the fields which are making this visual. So instead of having the year and the month from the calendar table, I would rather have it from the calendar disconnected table. So let's click right here, year and the month, and uh, replace the first two right here, just delete them off. And we have the year and the month from the calendar disconnected. Now at the moment, what is going to happen is that if I happen to pick up, let's say the month of May, it is not going to affect this particular visual. However, I would want that limiting behavior to kick in. For that to happen, I need to revise my total sales calculation so that my total sales calculation should stop up until the month of May right here for which I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this measures as a sales stop until and I'm going to maybe start to write like a calculate and I'll say hey why don't you calculate my total sales and what I'm looking forward to get is to stop this particular total sales up until the date which is selected. So I'll say that I would like to filter my calendar table and please take a look at every single calendar date and that should be less than equal to the date which is selected right here. Now this date selected can be the max, so the last date of the month of May. And I can just happen to write the max function of the calendar disconnected date. So let's just say calendar disconnected and that should be the date. And that's the index and let's just say date. All right, close the bracket close the bracket and close the bracket and press enter. Let's just see what do we get after we place this measure in the table. So I'm just going to place this measure in the table and let's just see what do we get. We do get uh, up until the month of May and we need to remove this particular total sales right here. So I'll just delete that off so that we just have one data point in the table. And now if you take a look, we have the month of June or July or whatever that might be and the table expands or contracts based on the selection of the slicer. Before we move on to the second trick, just a quick note that every single measure that you create, which is going to be a part of this particular table, will have this filter function added to that so that it limits the calculation to that particular date, which is selected in the slicer, and that works just perfectly. Trick number two, which is declaring tables as variables. If you're an Avid Power BI user, I'm sure you would have faced this in the past. So let's just say that you're creating a measure. In the measure, you have a variable and the variables gives you or returns you a table. But the problem is that particular table needs to be repeated over and over again in different measures. What do I mean by that? Please take a look. So at the moment, we have the sales stop until measure, that the trick that we saw it in the first part. And I'm just going to open up the DAX for that. And you're going to see that we have declared the calculate. And in the calculate, we have this table. And the table is then applying the filter. 
for any particular other measure that I created in this particular table or the matrix visual, I need to repeat the filter function over and over and over again. Can we perhaps just store the filter function as a variable and use it repeatedly over multiple measures? Yes, that is possible. Let me show you how. To make that happen, we would need tabular editor 2 and I have already installed that. If you haven't got it installed, I suggest that you install tabular editor 2 and we'll work with that. I'm going to go over to my external tools right here and tabular editor 2. You can also work with tabular editor 3 in case you would like to work with the paid version. But for now, I'm just working with the free version. And once tabular editor is open, I'm just going to go over to any of the table and start to create a measure. So I'll say right click. I want to create. I want to create a new measure. And let's just give this particular measure a name. Stop until filter. So stop until filter is the name of the measure. Now At the moment, once you start writing whatever expression, you write defining the expression or the calculation behavior of the measure. Instead, I will change the property from an expression to something called as detailed rows, which is going to give me the ability to declare a variable, which is nothing but a table filter. So I'll just go right here and I'll just go back at my Power BI, open up this particular uh, filter function right here, control C on that, get back to tabular editor and paste that right here. Now this is the filter that I would like to apply to multiple tables. Now that's about it. I just can just paste it right here, control S to save it. And you're going to see that that particular measure, which is stop until filter after saving this is going to appear right here in my Power BI. Now let's just go back and start to modify our formulas. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, sales stop until filter. And I'm just going to maybe use a function called detail rows. In the detail rows, it asks you for a measure and the measure is something that we've already defined in tabular editor. And I'm going to reference that stop until filter, close the bracket and press enter. It gives you the same result, but it works. Now you would not believe me until I show you by creating an absolutely new measure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the sales table, make a new measure. Let's just say that for this time, I'm creating a cost measure. So let's just say that a total cost until and that is going to be calculate the sum of the cost. OK, this is not the cost. Actually, this is the quantity, actually. So total quantity until and let's just say, hey, I want to sum the quantity. And now I will just use the detail rows expression. And then I'm going to reference my measure, which is stop until filter right here, which is nothing but the filter formula. I'm going to close the bracket and press enter. And I'm going to drag this visual to my uh, pivot table right here. And you're going to see that this particularly uh, stops at this, uh, you know, the month of May selected. Now, at the moment, the filter that we have applied to uh, the detail rows expression in Power BI is ridiculously simple. But the point that I'm trying to make is that this does not return a scalar value. It is actually returning you a table and you can store that in the detail rows expression and can use that repeatedly. And your table expression can be extremely complicated as well. And you do not have to write that over and over again. Now, at this particular time, I haven't tried the performance benefits of using this approach. But from a productivity standpoint, this seems to be like a good approach to follow. I learned this trick from Antarik Sharma who has written a very, very detailed blog post on that. I will highly recommend that you please also do check out that particular blog post as well. All right, I hope you like this one. Let's move on to the next trick. Trick number three, strict equals in DAX. Take a look at the problem. It's a pseudo problem that I'm working with, but it's going to be a good demonstration of what I'm trying to mean here. So I have uh, this total touch points measure and the total touch points at times returns a blank. And at times it returns a zero. Now let's just say that basis on the zero or the blank, I want to take distinctive action. So if it's a zero, I want to take an action. If it's a blank, then I want to take another action. If I happen to write, let's say, a touch point uh, calculation right here, I'm saying that, hey, why don't you take a look at this particular number? If this number is equals to a zero, then you write the word zero, like the text zero. Now, if I happen to drag that particular formula in my visual, you're going to see that the blank and the zero both are treated as a zero. So this is also a zero and this is also a zero. Therefore, you get the text as zero. However, they are not zeros. This one is a blank and this one is a literal zero. So how do I make it as a literal zero? What you can do is you can use something like a strict equal. Simple as that. What you're going to do is you're going to write a double equals to sign to make sure that it strictly equates that to a zero or a blank, whatever that might be. And in that case, I can just say something like a zero. Now, if you actually commit to this, this particular zero is going to go off and this is actually a zero. 
All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find the three tricks that I shared. Let me know which one do you think is going to be the most useful in the comments below. If you have any questions, they also go down in the comments below. Before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my courses on Power BI, DAX, Power Query, M and Data Modeling. In case you are a beginner and you'd like to get more sophisticated, more advanced, learn the fundamentals first and then take those fundamentals and start solving harder, more difficult problems, even of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. Hundreds of students have joined and they have benefited from a lot and I'm sure you will benefit too. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Bye.